Right, here we are again. Um, busy uh, transporting another batch of bees. Had to do a midday uh, midday removal. It's scorching hot outside. Unfortunately, we didn't have an option. It was a public risk, and we had to get those bees out of there as quickly as possible. So um, sometimes, ideally, we want to try and do it in late afternoon, going into the evening, um, that we can dismantle the object or the, lift the roof or whatever it may be um, in the evenings. Like in the afternoon and then do the actual remover, removal as you're going into the evening making sure that you've got all the forages and everything that have come home um, otherwise you end up leaving bees behind alternatively early early morning you're going to vacuum those bees up but uh, there is always the risk that now you've got bees that are uh, been holding it in all night and um, now all of a sudden they have to you know they need to go and do their, uh, their poop flight and uh, if you make sure you get get the bees out early enough that's fine then you can do an early morning removal alternatively it's not the uh, well it's actually not the best idea uh, to do an early early one so rather do it earlier and make sure that you release the bees I'd say probably before seven eight o'clock type thing uh, then it's okay but if those bees are going to be sitting in the box until nine o'clock in the morning especially if it's summer and it's and it's hot uh, and the bees aren't getting out to do their poop flight then you're asking you're looking for trouble so, um, people looking at me, see why have I stopped on the side of the road? But anyway, uh, not all of us play on our cell phones when we are uh, on the road. It's better to pull over when you do that. So anyway, um, the best thing is to go along, do it late afternoon, go into the evening. At that way, at least you're working at the, the premises at an acceptable hour. You're not keeping the uh, clients up until midnight uh, doing a removal. It shouldn't take that long. Um, we found that the average move, removal takes uh, about three hours. Um, if it's a tricky one, then you're probably talking about five hours. We've had them go on for 10 hours where it was a massive building. We had to set up the equipment, safety equipment and all that type of stuff. And then lift the roof and all that type of thing. So it can be a really, really uh, long process. Um, and then you can have a vacuum go, you know, where you go along and you vacuum up those bees. Just suck them up and off you go. Um, there's a bit of debate on whether or not uh, you should be vacuuming bees that are uh, just that have just arrived from swarming You've got to do what works for you. Anyway, long to story short um, We've got now uh, we've done a removal today and we've got the, the Bee vac here on our On the front seat um, in the aircon um, Like I said on the on the previous video not all of us do have aircon in our cars and this is very dangerous actually uh, driving around with a with a bee canister in your in your um, vehicle. If you have an accident, those bees break out and you're dead. Um, so in actual fact, you go drive with your, your bee suit on. Luckily, it's literally down the road from uh, where I'm going to be um, uh, keeping them until it's dark, reboxing them, and then moving them off to a site where it's uh, more than six k's away from the from the removal. So um, the whole thing is that if you if you don't have aircon, what do you do with these bees? You can't you can't have them on a hot day. Out, um, they're gonna cook in the bee back or they'll even cook inside the boxes and it's a it's a very sad heartbreaking thing um, so that's why we've gone along and invented this um, this uh, cooling lid the transporter lid that we called it for the BB bee back and um, you're about to see now exactly how it works um, but this is a perfect example why why we need it if you have a look at this uh, video over uh, this photograph over here um, this is one of our guys stuck in traffic, uh, did the removal in the morning, on his way back on the highway he's got uh, a good little plan where, you know on the old Hiluxes they've got like a corner, little corner window over there and you just open it up and it pushes the air in and it blows air onto the box on the front passenger seat. But um, the problem is that there was, a, there was a bus accident on the highway and um, this type of scenario here is where you now come to a standstill so how does he have airflow onto the onto the box stuck in traffic those bees end up dying so um, that's why we came along with this this transporter lid and um, let's have a look and see how it works something great to look forward to if you've got the bee back obviously you've got to have our bee, bee, bee back and uh, if you do I'm sure you're loving it it's uh, really changed our world we do about four removals a day with it quite easy and the bees will survive and we can vacuum big volumes big swarms of bees at one time and uh, no bees get injured in the process so it really has changed the game of um, bee removals so let's have a look right so we're on our way to another bee removal um, 
interesting discussion this morning on on uh, WhatsApp uh, amongst all the bee removers. So if you're not a bee remover, this video probably won't be of much interesting uh, interest for you. But um, yeah, basically what we chatted about was the pros and cons of a plastic bee vac. And um, I'm actually on my way on on my way to a, a bee removal. Uh, it's on the other side of Peter Marisburg. And uh, right now we're sitting at 29 degrees Celsius, stinking hot day. Uh, clouds look like it might be moving over, but uh, middle of the day we've uh, had the swarm arrive at a at a factory, and um, the staff are basically too petrified to go in and out. Um, if you're a beekeeper, you know this is uh, fairly the bees are fairly harmless at this stage. Um, but I think to the general public, you know, I mean, it's quite a frightening thing. You go and watch Discovery and all those type of things where. Um, you got people attacked by killer bees and Africanized killer bees and all that type of nonsense. Um, so uh, we just need to bear in mind the, the 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 public that we're dealing with. They don't know better, and um, no matter what you say, you can stand on your head. They'll still be scared of these bees that are outside the office. It's only door in, only door out. And uh, we're about to have a look. Have a look at this picture. We'll see what you think. Uh, if you didn't know anything about bees, would you go past this? Right, so I'm sure that we can all agree this is a ideal situation where it's an emergency removal. Go along and do it. I prefer doing it late afternoon, early morning. Um, but in this type of situation, we're going to do a slap bang in the middle of the day. Um, and uh, we're going to vacuum those bees up. One of the discussions on the, the removal WhatsApp group was um, the pros and cons of plastic bee bags. Now, those that know me and those that are operating in the KZN area know that we do loads of bee removals. Um, last month we averaged on three a day. We've got two teams out at any given stage and from time to time when the guys aren't available to respond, I go back out there myself. So <laughs> we do quite a few bees. Um, but uh, very few casualty cases. The guys go along and say the, the plastic box may, gets very hot and the bees can die. Um, yeah. If you don't know how to handle it, yes, they do. But um, there's ways and means around everything and uh, if you want something to work, it will. So we've got to have the right positive attitude, go along, times change, we want to go along and make sure that uh, that we have the best possible equipment at our aid, especially if we're doing bee removals and um, we've got those little creatures' lives at stake. Um, and then also human lives, when we're doing the removals, the last thing we can afford is something to go wrong. And um, go and kill a person or land someone in hospital just that bad so i want to show you guys that we can do it plastic bee uh, bee, remo uh, bee backs are, are not bad they're good um they're light there's so many uh, advantages that outweigh, outweigh the, the the con the two main cons that the guys are concerned about are um the the uh, condensation inside the the bee vac um and then we've got the heat uh, heat element so I felt that today is a perfect opportunity to sort out the heat element. Let's eliminate these these concerns by, one by one and let's see uh, what the factors are. While we're dealing with this uh, this point, just want to just want to mention something. We do bee removals up in Zululand, you know, to three um, uh, Amphalosi, Mpangeni, where often it's uh, very common for the weather to be sitting at 39 degrees Celsius uh, in the morning already by 10 o'clock. So, um, and we use our bee vacs and we don't get casualties with our bees um, and there's a way that we work around it that we don't get casualties so uh, the other factor of them being in the in the box for five hours five hours is, is a long time yes but uh, if we keep them cool if we keep the ventilation running why not why not have them in a box for five hours they can breathe and they can survive uh, they're looking after the brood so why not have them in a in a box for five hours? There's no difference having them in a bee bag for five hours. Um, but then again, we've got to have the ventilation. We've got to have the right temperature. We can't have those little guys uh, or girls uh, overheating. So let's see what we've got in Seoul and uh, let's tackle it. Let's see how it goes. Wish me luck.
Alright, so uh, done and dusted. Always nice getting those vacuum and go hives. It's uh, always good fun doing them. So, uh, and it's uh, a little bit of time out of the day and it makes it quite fun. Um, now you saw what we did with the VVAC and everything like that. Um, and generally how I've been transporting it is uh, in the front with the, with the aircon on. But a lot of the bee uh, remover guys don't actually have aircon in their vans. Uh, I think I'm a bit spoiled over here. But um, let's have a look and see what I've got going. Um, I don't know if you can see that over there. So um, that is just uh, the travel lid that we've recently made. And it's a new invention. So it's a prototype. It's the first time we're actually trying it out. It's got two little fans on top which actually sucks the air out of the top of the BVAC. And um, the, the BVAC actually has the holes down the side and down that side. So it actually blows... Uh, cool air from from the aircon uh, at the BVAC and then these little fans suck it up and actually pump out the hot air because hot air rises cold air sinks so it's pumping out all the hot air and it's giving a bit of uh, airflow at the same time so we're gonna have a look and see how these guys work out um, if it works out well then that's great but I actually ideally I want to have it that we don't need an aircon so uh, anyone can have a cigarette lighter you can see it's just plugged in over here um, all vehicles have a cigarette lighter, but not all cars have got uh, um, an aircon. So if we can go along and actually plug it into the cigarette lighter, have it on the back of the bucky, run the cable through the back window, or whatever you want to do, uh, if you're not comfortable having it in the front of the vehicle. So obviously it's very dangerous having it in front of the vehicle. If you have an accident, you've got bees all over, especially during the day. Um, at night, at least they're not flying around. But uh, yeah, you've got to travel with your, your suit on. Uh, you're actually supposed to have it fully up. But uh, we get lazy and we get uh, um, we forget the, all the rules and regulations. Um, and it's been stinking hot. It's now 30, 30 degrees Celsius. So um, it's a good day to test this this BVAC travel lid. And uh, let's see what happens with the bees coming out. Yeah, we're going. 